Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to check out the operating systems now available for a Raspberry Pi 5. To do this we're going to grab a Raspberry Pi 5, that's hardly a surprise, and also some micro SD cards. And I know we can boot a Pi 5 from USB or from an NVMe SSD plugged into a hat that connects to the Pi 5's PCIe connector and which I have shown in previous videos. But for these tests I thought we'd return to the Pi's native media and in particular SanDisk Extreme Pro microSD cards which over the years I've found to be very reliable as Pi boot drives. So let's go and get started. Right, here we are running our first operating system and surprise surprise it's Raspberry Pi OS. As the name suggests this is the official Linux distro for the Raspberry Pi 5 and it's very very good indeed. What we're running here is a clean install and as we can see in the menu this includes everything needed for general desktop computing activities. We have got an office package, we have got the Chromium and Firefox web browsers, we've got VLC media player, various accessories, preferences, and we also have some programming tools for those who want to use the Pi for Maker or other projects. As I think is apparent, operation is very fluid and responsive, even running from a micro SD card as we're doing here, although you can get even better performance with Raspberry Pi OS installed on an SSD. And indeed, if you want to see just how much you can achieve on a Raspberry Pi 5 in Raspberry Pi OS, just check out the Explaining Computers episode where I edited the whole video on a Raspberry Pi 5 running Raspberry Pi OS from an SSD, and I also held an HD Microsoft Teams video call. Back here in real time, let's launch a browser so we can visit YouTube and check out streaming media playback, which clearly has to work in a modern desktop operating system. Here we go, and whilst there are a few drop frames as things are getting set up, once things have settled down, things run very well indeed. We've got good solid 1080p streaming media playback. And indeed, one of the most important things to note about Raspberry Pi OS is that it's very well optimised for the Pi 5's GPU and other hardware. All of this noted, I would point out two small potential negatives. The first of which is the look and feel, which Whilst it is very clean, very clear and responsive, it may be a bit basic for some users' tastes. I, I personally like Raspberry Pi OS, I like the, the look of the operating system, but some people I know do look at it and go, it still looks like that, and uh, I can understand where they're coming from. And then secondly, and almost paradoxically, if we run up a few programs, let's run the file manager again, let's run the terminal for example, let's run up, I don't know, uh, let's run up a LibreOffice Writer, like that, and once we've got a few programs running, it'll get there in a second, come on program, you can do it, even from a micro SD card, and uh, there we are, three programs are now running, and I've run them up so I can press Alt-Tab like this, and as you can see, the task switcher which you get with Alt-Tab is uh, graphical and very fancy like that, and when I first used this I thought, that's really, really nice, but uh, over time I've come to realise it's incredibly annoying, and whilst it is uh, visually impressive, there's no way to turn this thing off and have a standard task switcher. But, let's be honest, if this is the worst thing I can say about Raspberry Pi OS, and it is, it must be a most excellent Raspberry Pi operating system. And certainly, it's my recommended operating system for those who want to use the Raspberry Pi for programming projects and maker activities. Greetings! Here we are in another general purpose desktop operating system, which is Ubuntu 23.10, otherwise known as the Mantic Minotaur. By default, over on the left we have a dock that provides access to our most commonly used applications. So for example, we can launch the file manager, or it's very exciting to launch the file manager, and for even more excitement, we can launch the Firefox web browser. And this comes up pretty quickly considering we're running here from a micro SD card. And oh look, we're on the Raspberry Pi page for Ubuntu, where it tells us we can install it either using Raspberry Pi Imager 
or we can download directly to install via other means. And whilst we're here in the browser, let's check out streaming media playback. There we go. And as previously in Raspberry Pi OS, we've got pretty solid 1080p streaming media playback, although we have a few more drop frames. It's not quite as good as we saw in Chromium in Raspberry Pi OS. Although, to be fair, Ubuntu does provide great support for the Pi 5's hardware. This said, there is one thing to note, which is that at the time of making this video, on the first install of Ubuntu on a Raspberry Pi 5, any connected fan will run constantly at full speed. However, this is easily fixed by running the software updater. Talking of which, if we click bottom left to see all available applications in this default install, you can see we've got lots of uh, nice pre-installed things, which include the software updater. Let's just run that up so you can see what I was talking about. There is a software updater, just checking for updates. It'll find nothing, I think, for this system because it's up to date. But if it wasn't up to date, you could click to install all available updates. And uh, let's just look at what's pre-installed again. Here we've got an Office package. We have got a Firefox web browser. We have got various utilities. We've got an email client. So all the basics are here. And we even have a few games, including Solitaire. Yes, Solitaire is pre-installed here in Ubuntu on the Raspberry Pi. And this has to earn the operating system at least 107 extra points. Finally, if we click top right, we can go to settings where we have more control than in Raspberry Pi OS and where we can even select the coolest ever desktop wallpaper dedicated to a maze dwelling mythical creature, which is a down here. We just select that. Isn't that a cool desktop wallpaper dedicated to a maze dwelling mythical creature? And so there we are, Ubuntu 2310, the Mantic Minotaur, a very slick, a very responsive operating system, which right now is my favorite general desktop OS for the Raspberry Pi 5. And if you're wondering why, it's because it just feels a little bit more professional than Raspberry Pi OS. And also, if we run up a few applications, I've still got the file manager running there. Let's just run up, for example, LibreOffice Writer like that. Here it goes. There we are. Let's also run up Firefox. Got that now running as well. And if I now press Alt Tab, we get a nice standard application switcher, which is not visually distracting in a manner that could drive me insane. So, here we now are running Armbian, which is a popular Linux distro for ARM SBCs, although it's also now available for some RISC 5 boards just to confuse us. Anyway, here we're running it on the Raspberry Pi 5. And if we click on activities and go to all applications, you'll see there's lots of things pre-installed, more than we saw in the last two distros we were looking at. Not just the usual stuff like LibreOffice, but also lots of other tools. And it's good to see, for example, we've got GIMP pre-installed and FileZilla pre-installed for FTP. If we launch a browser, which here is again Chromium, you'll see we do have a bit of a lag going on sometimes. The mouse jumps around a bit. You might have seen that there. And you therefore won't be surprised that if we try to do streaming media playback, the results are not as good as we saw in Raspberry Pi OS or Ubuntu. And as you can see, we've been dropping frames and we are still are dropping frames. Lots of frames being dropped here. This has not got great streaming media playback in this distribution. And so if you want to have good streaming media playback in a browser, which I think these days is pretty much a must in a desktop operating system, I personally wouldn't choose Ambient. This said, I know lots of people do like to run Ambient on their SBCs, so it's great to have it available for the Raspberry Pi 5. Guess what? We're now running OpenFide, specifically OpenFide version 17, which is one of many operating systems for the Raspberry Pi 5 based on Chromium OS, which is the open source version of Chrome OS that runs on Google Chromebooks. And this runs very well indeed. If your requirement for a Raspberry Pi 5 desktop operating system is to basically use online applications, this is by far the best choice, I think, of operating system for the Pi 5. Down here we can see applications, as you can in Chrome OS and related operating systems. Most things here, of course, take us straight out to the web because that's the whole purpose of Chromium OS, that you use web-based applications. 
down here we've got various settings and controls. We can shrink those down, move them up. I just like this operating system. I actually run Chrome OS Flex on a computer connected to my television and use it for all of my streaming and various other stuff. So I run this operating system every day or something very like it. And it's great to find it running so well on a Raspberry Pi 5. If I just launch uh, the Chromium browser, we'll just uh, paste in a link to my YouTube test clip. There it is and let it go. There we are. And as you can see, YouTube playback is very good indeed. We had one drop frame as things were just being set up. And after that, this is very, very good playback here. We've got fantastic streaming media playback here in an open file on the Raspberry Pi 5. This would make a fantastic operating system to run on a computer connected to a television. I could even do that, couldn't I? Replace the uh, XXX PC connected to my television with a Raspberry Pi 5 running an uh, open file. And in fact, I might in the future make a video all about the different operating systems based on Chromium OS available for the Pi 5. Lots of different versions available, but uh, for now, this is open fired and it runs very well indeed. So, as we transition to looking at more specialist operating systems, here we are running Kali Linux on the Raspberry Pi 5. And in case you're not in the know, Kali Linux, as we can see here on its web page, is the most advanced penetration testing distribution. Or in other words, it's a Linux distribution focused on ethical hacking, auditing network security, things like that. And so if we look in the menu here in terms of what's pre-installed of this distribution, it's a little bit different to what we normally see. We do have what they call the usual applications, but there's also stuff here for information gathering, vulnerability analysis, password attacks, wireless attacks, reverse engineering, sniffing and spoofing tools, digital forensics, things like that. And clearly this takes us way beyond the scope of this particular video, but I thought it was important to point out that Kali Linux is available and runs very well on the Raspberry Pi 5. Moving on, we now come to Raspberry Pi 5 operating systems dedicated to a very specific task. And here, I'm going to cover what's currently available far more briefly, not least as extra hardware is sometimes required. For example, as we can see on this web page, the Lumino can be used to turn a suitably equipped Raspberry Pi 5 into a music player and streamer. However, for this, additional audio output hardware is needed. This said, no additional hardware is required to use Libra Elec, which turns a Raspberry Pi into a Kodi media player. This provides an excellent lean back interface if you want to use a Pi 5 to consume content on a television. However, personally, I prefer to use a Chromium based operating system for this purpose, such as OpenFide, as we saw earlier. Next, let's run up Raspberry Pi Imager, where with Raspberry Pi 5 selected, several operating systems we've not looked at so far can be found lurking. For example, if we scroll down here, we get to Emulation in Game OS, where we find Recall Box, which I installed earlier and which can emulate over 100 old systems. And even though I'm not really a retro gamer, I may well experiment with this at some point as it's very slick indeed, incredibly professional, and at least one of these old platforms must run Pac-Man. Back here in Raspberry Pi Imager, we've next got other specific purpose OS, where we've already checked out Kali Linux, and below that we have full page OS, which boots directly into the Chromium browser to display a web page full screen, and can be useful for things like digital signage. Meanwhile, those in education may be excited or dismayed to discover that Moodlebox is available. Whilst others will certainly be very excited indeed to discover we've got lots of operating systems for home automation. Here they all are. And yes, this is something I really must experiment with on the channel in the future. Finally, if we go to freemium and paid for OS, we discover that Android is available for the Raspberry Pi 5, specifically Android by Emerita. And here we can see there is a free forever starter plan, although to use this, you do have to create an account. And so, so far, this is something I've yet to investigate. So,
So there we are. We've looked at lots of different operating systems now available for the Raspberry Pi 5. But what operating system would you like to see on the Pi 5 that isn't currently available? Please let us all know down in the comments section. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.